just one more quick video and it's on a creating materials, but I'm not going to create a material via the normal method of the wall or the roof tool. I'm actually going to create it inside of uh, our custom estimation tool. And first things first, what is a custom material? And you'll notice in the last video, I quickly just started estimating over top of a, a plan and you may not have this material. How did I get it there? And how would you get it there the quickest and easiest way? Well, because we have a, a set of plans here, um, let's just say there's a material on this set of plans and you can see that this is a repeating texture. Basically what that means is that this texture, uh, I'll see if I can find it in elevation view, say like there, it's an image essentially. Now, depending on the, the quality of the texture you're trying to use, you can use several things. So inside of uh, a Windows machine, you can have a snippet tool. I'm not sure what it's called inside of uh, Mac. However, it's a screenshot basically, and I can just go new, and basically I can just choose a, a section of the drawing, and I can make that into an image. Right, so snippet, there it is there, and I can go file, save as. The snippet tool is one way of doing it. The, the problem with a snipping tool I find is that it's a little bit hard to use, and so on. So I actually use one called Fast Stone Capture, guys. I think it's 20 bucks. There is a free version if you're really keen to look it up. And I use it every day of the week. Uh, and as you can see, I've actually got some things here. It might be development notes, things that I need as a reminder. But essentially, Fast Stone Capture, once you open it up, you can just click plus and you can do videos and, and all those type of things on it. But for me, I just want to go and create this texture. So I'm just going to, I'm not going to get as close or as accurate with this one here because when I did that, I'm inside of Vasto and I can just sort of zoom in very easy and go, oh, okay, well, I don't want that black line there. And I think that should be about right. And because it's got a black line on the other side, I'm going to delete that one there as well. <clears throat> the best thing about this, I can also change the size of the image. You don't want to have a huge image. So if I went resize, 65 um, pixels wide is okay. I want to keep it under 150 um, kilobytes. That way it runs nice and smooth and can, I can import it back into Pluspec. So if I save this, save, and I might just quickly just put it on my desktop and I'm going to call it, I don't know, what would that be called? Special Stone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Special Stone on my desktop and go save. Okay, now in my custom estimation tool, I'm going to go through and I'm going to look up stone. And you know what, I'll quickly put, uh, yeah, let's go look up stone first, which we quantify an area. Stone, uh, what have we got? You see here I've got stone in the category. I could have an internal finish of stone and I could have masonry, which is external. Let's see if there's any other categories with stone in it. You see these are all the materials inside of here. What else have we got? We've got insulation. It's just because that had stone in it. So really what I'm looking for is where do I want to put my stone landscaping? So on, I think I'm going to go back up and I'm going to use it as my masonry. So if I click on just any item here, I can create a similar product. Create similar product, current selection. Let's open it in another tab. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you'll notice that it's just chosen the selection that was in there. Now I want to go and choose the, the stone that I just actually created. Uh, so I'm going to go quick access and hopefully that makes it easy. There it is, special stone, and go open. Right. Now I can tell it the width of the texture. Now I'm going to take a guess that, that that's probably 500. So let's say it's a meter wide. You would have to type in whatever it is that would that your the screen capture is you've chosen and it's not a great image but i think it's a, a good enough thing now special stone you might call it stone for estimating you might call it stone cladding whatever it is that you're going to call it the category is masonry and the thickness of the stone is really what i'm going to do here and let's just say this is a veneer so we might say this is uh 20 millimeters thick so i type in mm if it's inches type inches or whatever it is centimeters you can share it now, if it's not a great image, don't share it with the public because the more junk we get up there, the harder it is for you to grab some really good images really quickly. And then I'm going to go, I agree, create material from template. <clears throat> now, what's happened is, is it's created this material and, and usually in our wall tool, we can drag and drop it. But 
When you get into the habit or you've done the first few materials, it's a good idea to create similar products. So you just go create similar and then you would go through, create similar, give it a second. It's going to create another material similar and I can just choose another image and override it. Now inside of my uh, file structure guys, I've actually got a whole heap of materials. I'll quickly show you. So in my pictures, I have a folder called materials. Inside of materials, I have landscaping, insulation, bricks, cladding, whatever it is, and I can go through and I can choose all materials. Guys, if you want some of these materials, I'm happy to share them. Just need to comment below uh, and uh, we'll make sure and just put in, you know, uh, enough for us to figure out who you are so you don't get spammed uh, and uh, we'll get you these materials. Uh, or you can head over to the website and make a request. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm not going to create more. I think it's going to be repetitive. I think you get the idea. But what happens with this material now? Well, the answer is that what I need to do is I actually need to go back and use my synchronization tool. And the reason why you're synchronizing it is if you lose your computer today or you, um, <clears throat> you've got multiple people that work, and say you're an estimator, a designer, um, you know, a, a supervisor, and all of them need to use plus design build to quantify and, and build this job virtually, this enables you to share those without having to actually physically transfer files. It's a really good way to do it. And to find that out, guys, you, you'll notice that there is click here to watch a tutorial at the top. And this could take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna finish what I'm gonna say, pause it if, because I'm not sure how long it's been since I've done the last sync. Synchronizing is really, really important, guys. When you start up Pluspec for the first time, I might just quickly go to another file save <clears throat> here. When you start Pluspec for the first time, it should say your material library is up to date, uh, your software is up to date. If these turn out grey, click them and it will allow you to update uh, and resynchronize uh, your files. Uh, and I create lots of custom materials. Just one other thing with custom materials before I go back to that file is inside of each tool, when you go to a material, material selections and finishes, you'll notice I have the ability to have standard materials, which are basically what come with Pluspec as sort of default materials. I have branded materials, which would be suppliers. For instance, I've got Austral Bricks here. After a while, you might go, you know what, I don't need the standard materials anymore. I like, I've already renamed everything that I wanted to so that my estimates turn out right and my selections turn out right and my specification for the client turns out right. You're going to go through and turn them off. Now, the benefit of doing this is it actually reduces the amount of selections, right? If I turn this one off here, it makes Pluspec work a lot quicker because now I only have 20 items to, to filter through and it makes the software faster to use and so on. So just a, that's a little tip there for you guys. Um, right, so I'm going to go back to that other file that we were just working on, which was this one here, I think. Okay, done. Now, I can't remember what I called that product, but let's have a quick look. Uh, back up into, I'm going to quickly draw, say, uh, a rectangle over this stone here. And we would obviously do this on all elevations. It appears to me that the stone goes down to there and this stone here would go to here. So if I select these two here <clears throat> and I go up to my special estimating tool and I write in stone, I think it might have been special stone I called it. Special stone, there it is, right? And if I apply it to the selected entities there, you'll notice it actually chose the same texture. And if I did a takeoff of these two items here, right click, take off, selection only, I will now have the quantities of stone just in what I've traced. Obviously you go to all elevations and trace all elevations, right? And we go edit, see more and special stone. I can go through and put in a price per square meter. I'm going to say hundred dollars per square meter. I could then go, if you watch my last tutorial, you'd know how to associate labor. So I could go and add a new item for labor to, to every time I put this special stone in, it can associate a price, a subcontractor and a cost code or item code to it. Don't forget guys to watch the tutorials at the top here as well. So that's how to create a material uh, so that you can estimate it and so you can show your customer. Now guys, practice creating a few materials. Get a folder if you need some extra materials. You can search up tileable textures or seamless textures online. Just make sure that you know, you're not ripping someone else's work off. Uh, and you can put them in. The main thing is that you need to know that 150 kilobytes is the maximum texture size. All right, guys, I hope it helps. Uh, if you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike. But tell us why, and that way we can improve next time. Cheers, guys.